Hello, judges. We are Team Call U12. The members of Call U12 are Alex Edward Chua, Lim Dao Jin, Ang Hai Wei, and myself, Kian Pol Muna Singh. We are from Singapore and we are taking part in the RCJ Rescue Line U12 category. In June, we participated in Robocup Singapore Open, winning first place for the technical challenge and the best long book award, achieving a distinction overall. This is the summary of the preliminary challenge for FU1. We identified the zigzag with the bumps as the biggest challenge where we had to get the robot to continue line tracking without it going off course. We used time traps to enable the robot to navigate over the speed bumps and proportional line, line track to track the line tightly, correcting errors right away. As a result, we were able to clear this element. In FU2, crossing over to Two consecutive line gaps were the biggest challenge we faced. It was difficult to find the continuation of the line after the line gaps as the robot had to navigate without any landmarks for a large distance. To solve this, we calibrated the color sensor so that there, there was no error in the proportional line track when crossing over the gap, allowing the robot to move straight. In our test, the, the robot is able to travel straight across. We plan to complete the challenge by completing the line tracking, collecting the rescue kit, and rescuing the victims within four minutes. We will do this over four sessions as we already have some code from our national competition. During our first session, we managed to complete we managed to line track nine times on field two. For our second session, we, we completed the presentation. For our third session, we'll complete the remaining 18 tiles for field two and do our live interview. For our fourth session, we'll complete field one and do our live presentation. This may change when we get our actual competition schedule. Now we are going to talk about the robot design and software. This is the drive base of the robot. We used tank treads as it had more grip and it could go over ramps and speed bumps more easily. We designed the robot with a low center of gravity so it could pass the speed bumps without the robot flipping over. This is the downward facing color sensors. We had to enable it to be high enough to clear the 1cm speed bumps. If it was too high, the color sensors would not get any reflection values as the light emitted by the color sensors would be too dim. We positioned it exactly over the speed bumps for optimal reading. The width of the sensors are placed so that they can measure the green squares accurately while being over the sensors while line tracking. Now, I will talk about the calibration of the color sensors. First, I subtracted the black value from the current value of each RGB channel, then divided them by their ranges, which is the white value minus black value. While this should produce a value between 0 and 1, lighting changes could cause them to go out of range out of this range. We used the min and max functions to make sure that it stays within this range for accurate comparisons. Now, I'll talk about proportional line tracking. First, I used the green channel in RGB mode so that the line tracking won't be disrupted by the green squares as they will have green values that are similar to white. Next, I coded the robot to subtract the right green value from the left green value to obtain a cross-track error. This cross-track error is multiplied by a fixed constant so that we can adjust how fast the robot turns in response to the error. The more the robot is off the line, the greater the cross-track error and the more the robot will turn. Now, I will talk about how the robot navigates intersections. When both color sensors are sensing black, the robot would move back. When both color sensors sense green, the robot would make a U-turn. When only the left color sensor senses green, turn left. When only the right color sensor senses green, the robot would turn right. As you can see, the robot easily goes over the diagonal speed bumps thanks to the tank tracks. It is able to ignore the intersection without the green square on the side it is approaching from. It can easily handle the multiple 
sharp 90 degree turns. The robot is able to react correctly to the double green squares where it does a U-turn. With sensor calibration, the robot is able to pass the short line gaps easily and find the line again. The ultrasonic sensor is always used for detecting the objects with the help of the color sensor in front of it. So the robot could go around the objects in front of the robot after the color sensor sees it. In order for the ultrasonic sensor to be effective, the sensor had to be placed on the robot where it has to be above the speed bump and the ground. The ultrasonic sensor can see opaque objects such as the items that are going to be placed during the competition. When there is nothing in front of the color sensor, it normally detects black. When there's something present, the color sensor detects either black, green, yellow, red, orange, white, or blue. The objects the claw picks up are ping pong balls and the rescue kit. We ensure that the balls do not slip above or below the claw by adding a few blocks underneath and above the claw. The grab and lift mechanism needs to lift the balls so the balls can be sorted into dead or alive by the sorting mechanism at the top of the robot. Mm -hmm. We had to add more weights to the claw as it allowed it to tilt back to ensure the objects are only released at the top of the robot. We needed to sort the box to put the live victims into the evacuation box before the dead victims so we can get more points. Initially, the box will not go to the channel so we designed the change of so we changed the design of the platform. The two storage channels are needed to store the orange and white victims and the blue cube. The storage channels are tilted down because the balls will be put down by gravity, but when the triggers are pushed, the balls will be thrown into the evacuation zone. When the front color sensor is orange, it will activate the claw and tilt the sorting mechanism there. When the front color does not sense orange but senses white, it will activate the claw and tilt the sorting mechanism right. But when the front color sensor does not sense white or orange, the robot will continue searching for victims. Notice how the robot picks up and sorts the balls of different colors. When the front color sensor senses blue, the claw gets activated and will tilt the sorting mechanism to the right. If not, it will continue line tracking. Here's a preview of the robot picking up the rescue kit. The deposit mechanism works in such a way when the robot's back hits the evacuation zone, the Balls will go in and the storage will tilt backwards. Here is a video of the robot putting the balls into the evacuation zone. Okay. We learned how to improve line tracking performance by doing calibration and proportional control. There were also a lot of constraints on the hardware and we learned to work around by trying multiple designs. Sometimes the robot did not work and we got frustrated at it, but we learned to persevere. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you everyone. everyone.